if somebody could learn to play like uh, Beethoven's Missa uh, uh, Grosse Fuga, you know, from his last quartet there, if they could play the whole piece, you know, with the bass, the, the cello, the viola, the two violins, on one hurdy-gurdy, that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe because of the hurdy-gurdy's uh, limitations of setting up this broad roof. Roof. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> a broad roof and a, um, what is it? The wood? Warp. And the warp. Uh, We're definitely uh, warp. And the, to go in and through it. That's it. That's a sensual feeling. In other words, we're hearing that as auditory and it's becoming some sort of uh, mental uh, internalization. And that would be good for uh, trying to imagine what the inexpressible and unimaginable is like a little bit. Can, can you talk about the music being linear in the Middle Ages? Before, it, before harmony so music is still linear. Music starts and moves forward. And for most people, it moves from left to right. But it goes through time. It's going along. But I think it's a variation in the pitch that you're hearing. You play record backwards usually just using your food. Can I have a beer? I have. I have. Just a sip. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my partner in crime, <laughs> my wife Honey said she also plays the hurdy-gurdy. I didn't bring mine. <laughs> and she didn't bring her hurdy -gurdy. And Maggie, of course, is our artistic <laughs> <laughs> um, so for the, the um, next two pieces of our program, we're going to move inside. So if you have a chair, um, I would suggest that you take it so that you keep having a chair. Um, we also have some wooden um, rectangular boxes over there, which could be used as chairs and brought up to the front. Um, so we're going to take just a couple minutes for everyone to move in and get settled um, right. and continue the program inside. Try, try not to have a stampede effect on the dirty <laughs> 